Last year's season ended for the Los Angeles Dodgers two games from going to the World Series, and this team is motivated to go all the way this year. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Sorreo here at Camelback Ranch with Doug Hughes, my baseball expert, and we are having a great time here with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mainly for me, I live on the, on the East Coast. I'm not getting snowed on, I'm not exactly. getting sleeted on. <laughs> happy to be here. You're Take as long that. as you want. That's right. Now, we're going to talk a lot about spring training, how the guys have been doing. Um, it, there's a lot that's been going on, but today we got some news about Dr. Frank Job and his passing. He was 88 years old. He was, of course, the amazing doctor who created um, the Tommy John surgery. And what everyone's saying is that it's just a, a game changer in terms of baseball. Right. There are people who affect a the sport, they may or may not play it and they change it. And Dr. Job extended and enabled a whole lot of careers here at the major league level. Some people we have really enjoyed over the years, Oral Hershiser worked on his shoulder, right. worked on some of the biggest names, including Tommy John. Yes. And, uh, and his passing has really made people stop and take note of the fact that this guy was a guy who changed the face of baseball. Well, he really did. You know, as a doctor and as a baseball guy, I mean, he would come to the ballpark and he would talk to all the players. He loved them. He loved being there. I had a chance a few years ago to interview him and he he was so humble, so down to earth, and he asked me, you know, what would I be asking him? And I would say, Dr. Job, all you'll know the answers to all of the questions that I'm going to ask you. Just a sweet, sweet man. But here in spring training, we had a chance to catch up with some people that knew him a whole lot better than we did. So let's take a look. He's touched more wins, more saves, you know, more at bats maybe than anybody in baseball history. Oh, he definitely changed the game. You know, he made rosters deeper, and he made it something where uh, people general managers and player development people would take risks on people with sore elbows and draft them and ended up having ended up having surgeries or something but Dr. Job either made people's careers or extended people's careers so yeah he changed he changed sports medicine for a long long time and I mean even to this day because of his his teaching abilities and his fellowship program you know most of the doctors around the big leagues were trained uh, you know by him. Well, we had a very close relationship. He was not only our doctor, but he was our friend. And uh, he had a very dry sense of humor, a very gravelly voice for such a kind soul. Uh, and he, uh, you know, there's just so many stories of things other than being your surgeon. Um, he loved the game. He loved rooting for the Dodgers. He loved, uh, you know, he rooted for every player that he examined or worked on, but there was a special fondness for the Dodgers, I think. And, uh, you know, he had a great sense of humor. I remember slipping in the shower after my reconstructive surgery before the rehab had even barely begun and I called him at like a 1.30 in the morning and I said, Dr. Job, I think I did something really terrible. I slipped out of the shower and fell in the surgery and he said, uh, Oral, I'd have to drop you off a one-story building right on your shoulder for you to ruin that surgery. You just go to sleep. <laughs> Um, he really has set the standard in regards to this, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to sit with him uh, during the games and uh, when he has come by. And uh, you know, last several years, he's he's not always been uh, well enough to come to the games, but almost every time, uh, every home stand, he would come to a game and sit uh, and really hold court, which was great. Uh, you, you got living history there, and it was uh, great to talk with him. Um, and he was always so sharp; he would keep uh, keep up with all our players and. Uh, ask questions and give us recommendations on players that were hurt. And um, but I also got to hear a lot of the stories uh, about how he decided to do Tommy John uh, surgery on Tommy John and mm -hmm. and uh, all the things that happened afterwards. So that was, was an unbelievably life experience for me. I learned so much from Oral Hershiser just to, during that interview and talking to him about what the surgery has done for him and millions of other guys. I mean, they, they would not be where they are now without the surgery. A whole lot of guys. It, yeah. uh, there are When the uh, Major League season opens, there's about 360 pitchers. Uh, last year when the season opened, 124 of them had had Tommy John. One in three people. And people have do not realize. Johns, yes. yeah, you, you hear about the big names when they have it this evening, Strasburgs and, and, uh, uh, and the Tommy Johns. I had the pleasure of meeting Tommy John years ago when we talked about the surgery and, and a lot of other things. Tommy John's a talker. Yes. Uh, and I, I, uh, we talked about the surgery and I, I touched the scar. It was a, a giant scar. It was a giant U-shaped scar. This was back in the early days of obviously Tommy John surgery yeah. uh, and it's gotten better and better since then his recovery was long it cost him a number of wins he sat mm -hmm. out a whole season right he is he has 288 career wins he's 12 short of the magic 300 and he thinks that's what's holding him out of the Hall of Fame it's kind of unfair but he was able to have an entire long career after the surgery 
when it did not seem that was possible. And he was very grateful for that. He was tweeting about that last night. Well, it, it definitely ext it extended players' careers for sure. I remember Dr. Joe telling me, though, you know, once a player has had surgery, he thinks he's better than he was before, but he really isn't. It takes five, six years sometimes. Sometimes they have to have multiple surgeries. He also told me something. He said, anytime you see ice on a b any kind of an athlete, they're injured, which just goes to show you how injured these guys are all the time from what they do. Well, you, you watch a guy anytime a pitcher is done pitching a game, he, he appears for his post-game interview wearing With a huge, huge, ice, huge, huge pile ice of packs. ice. Yes. His arm is injured. Uh, Tommy John surgery is a severe injury. Your body doesn't know the difference between no. uh, between uh, whether you've been in a car wreck or whether Dr. Frank Job has a real sharp <laughs> knife. True. It knows you've been cut. It knows something, something bad has been going on in there, and it takes a long time to recover. The fact that these guys can come back from taking a torn ligament the ulnar, ulnar collateral ligament and uh, stealing, any surgeon who does it, steals part of a uh, tendon from a, uh, your other arm, your non-throwing right. arm, uh, puts it in there, wraps a figure eight around. The fact that all this stuff can happen and you can pitch again at the major league and level. And extend your career is just amazing. Astonishing was the word I was going to use. Amazing, astonishing. Amazing, astonishing. Take now, your pick. One of the most amazing and astonishing things that we get to do here in spring training is talk to Dodger skipper Don Mattingly every day and uh, some of the players as well. So let's take a look at that. We're seeing a guy that's a little bit rusty, I think, from not playing. Uh, still seeing a guy that we feel like he's got life in his legs, uh, can handle all the positions. We've been out everywhere we've put him. Uh, he seemed comfortable. Um, we see a guy that knows how to play. Um, you know, I, I think we're, again, we're going to try to keep getting uh, Sean as many at bats as we can and see where it's going to go. How has it been the first two weeks of spring training? It's great. It's great to be back, you know, get that, that feeling of team camaraderie and, you know, just getting out there and playing every day is great. Yeah, you know some of the guys in this locker room. Who are you friends with right away? Uh, well, I've played with Aribe and Olivo since uh, we all signed, and, you know, I've been close with them guys more than anybody in here. Uh, I know Jamie Wright for a long time, you know, played with him in Colorado. Well, he's a little ahead of me, but i you know, been on some couple teams with him, too. Seems like there's a lot of guys are competitive playing ping pong over here. Have you gotten in on this yet? Uh, me and Hanley have played sometimes, <laughs> but we're just out there messing around. Those guys are pretty good. Well, last time I saw Brian Wilson, we were at a hockey game at Dodger Stadium. How is spring training going so far for you? Uh, you know, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of spring training. Uh, just because I want to get the season started. Right. I'm already ready. Yeah. Uh, I like to prepare myself in the off season. I like to make sure I'm 100% when I come into spring training. And uh, I guess the good part about this is getting acclimated with the team in baseball again and then uh, working on things that you might not usually work on. Oh, thanks. Appreciate that. It seems like when a lot of new guys come in, it's kind of a time when you get to know everybody that's coming in as well. Yeah, there's a lot of good young arms here. Uh, I don't know too much about the uh, hitting prospects, but uh, this team's got a lot of depth. So whether or not the guys start off in double A AA or triple A, they're going to get their shot, uh, whether it's this season or next. But I just know the Dodgers, uh, they, they've got a good amount of players and uh, good young young players. What are your first impressions of being here? Um, you know, everybody works really hard here. Um, it's been, been pretty impressive, and it's very different than Cuba. What's it like coming into this clubhouse? You already have some friends that, that you can talk to in your own language. How is it entering in this clubhouse? It's difficult to have a Cuban when you come to the United States. And to have a Latin and a Cuban on the side of me favors me a lot. Um, I mean, <clears throat> imagine you guys, you know, it's, it's, it's really difficult, but it's great. Uh, the language has been the hardest, the hardest change um, and adjustment so far. Um, but, you know, having some, some friends here, some Spanish speakers and Cubans has been great. Now, are you teaching him English? Um, a little bit here and there, but he has a teacher. He has another teacher. So, how often do you, do you study English? ¿Cuántas veces estudia inglés a la semana? Cinco veces a la semana. Five, yeah, five times a week with the teacher. Okay, so, so going back to baseball, you've been here a couple of weeks now, so what's it been like being out there and playing with the Dodgers? Yeah, you know, it's great um, playing with such a great team and such a, a good collection of players. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm just trying to work hard and, and fit in, and it's great. I think, we're, you know, we're going to do great. You know, it's so funny to me because some guys don't like being in spring training. Like Brian Wilson, he's done. He wants to move on. Most of them just want, want to get the season started as soon as they can. It's, it's always interesting. What surprises me, I've seen a few guys say it this year as they talk about getting in shape for the season here. Yeah. What have you been doing in the off season? <laughs> well, they've been getting in shape pretty close, you know. <laughs> They're close, yeah, but they, they put the finishing touches on. For the veterans, it's, it's putting the finishing touches on That's being right. in shape. For some guys, it's trying to make the team. For the other guys, Guys, it's uh, I'm gonna make the team. I'm not gonna make the team. What I'm position gonna am I gonna weight, play? I'm gonna lose weight. I'm gonna gain weight. They have so many things to think about. That's for sure. You yeah, know? I'm gonna be a bench player. I'm gonna be a starter. There, there's a, there's the comfortable people. The in between people are fine tuning, and there's the guys who are clawing for their very life. That's very true. Now, one change this year is the team is going to Australia to start their season, which is very different. We've already heard from some players that that not really crazy about going. Baseball players have a routine, and that's what they like to stick to. But a lot of guys are excited. They're going to Australia with their, their teammates. They're going to see things there. So it's going to be fun, but it's a very long plane ride. Doug. It's a plane ride. That's all you hear about here. I see it's it, a long plane ride. I see it as a free trip to a foreign country where they speak English. I see this as, <laughs> as a complete win-win situation. I am considering concealing myself in the wheel well. You know how you can do that? You get up in the wheel well you and it closes. You can do that. You take along snacks, some snack food, some Kittles, whatever, and... Uh, I would love to go to Australia. You hear these guys complaining it about it. It's a long flight on a, on a professional athlete's body. It's a long flight. Well, for the Dodgers, they start in Australia, and then they're going to do the home opener for San Diego in San Diego, and then have the Dodger home opener. So it's kind of a lot going on um, in just a couple of weeks. So kind of understand what they're not crazy about going, all of them, but they're easing into it. And Don Mattingly just said he was excited about it. So you know. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. That's, yeah. all, that's all you Are need to know. Are they going to come back talking like that, too? All or? of them. Full accents. <laughs> <laughs> People love it. It sounds fun. It sounds happy. It sounds intelligent. It sounds I'm, hot. I'm okay, start, guys are hotter when I they have the accent. I don't know what it is. I going to go there, but I'm Sorry. thinking of, of developing the fake accent myself. People like it. Good day, mate. Okay, speaking of hotness or... or Something like that. Where are you going? Where okay. are you going? So we were in the locker room the other day, and this doesn't happen very often, but <laughs> thank we, goodness we had this we had this new intern you might call him that grabbed my mic, and uh, he had some fun. Let's take a look. Hello, people. Good afternoon. We're here from Coming Back Ranch from Arizona. I think uh, we got these two guys over here. They've been complaining all year. Who who's better looking? And I want you guys to decide who you think is better looking. That Chum Figgin. And Juan Gorilla Uribe! Yeah, you gotta give your opinion. Uh, for me, I can't tell. It's pretty, tell. It's pretty tight right now. They, they both, <laughs> they both in zero right now, but you know. Alivo! 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 Come on, man! We want you to go to HenryRamir.com and vote for who you think and give me your opinion. We go. We want to know because we want to finish it up. This. Look at this. Look at this. We got that beautiful, sexy smile right here, and we got that gorgeous face over here. Well, we used to say it was Manny being Manny. I'm just going to say it's Hanley being Hanley, and that was hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> we lost control Five. completely of our intern, <laughs> but but because that's spring training for you. What are you going to do? You know, it was also the first day when they had a night game, so they got to sleep in that day. They were having fun, and it's just always interesting and fun when a player just grabs your mic, and you never know what will happen. The so. players were saying that was sort of the first day the mood turned it from, did, okay, yeah. we're here, what are we doing, we're working, to, oh, heck, let's have some fun. Exactly, and they did have some fun. Now, some of the players that we lost last year on uh, Nick Punto, Skip Schumacher, and Mark Ellis went to other teams, but we got some new guys. Uh, we got Sean Figgins, Sean Figgins. And, and Dan Heron. And Dan, Dan, Heron. Dan Heron, I see, is the big acquisition there. This, this is a pitching staff that could use yeah. a, a little booster, a little uh, kick in the tail end. Here it is, Dan Heron. Right. Uh, well, we don't have enough pitchers because we've got Clayton Kershaw, Zach Ranke, yeah, well, that's Ninjin a, Ryu. That, we've got all these pitchers, but. Adding a couple more is always a good idea. Well, it's that's a one-two punch, and that is a one-two punch. I think it's almost unlike, a one-two-three, don't you think? Well, now, uh, but but the, as a one-two punch, yes, one-two-three. But as a one-two punch, unlike great. anything else in baseball, I think that's having true. Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke both absolute frontline pitchers up to up top in the order uh, to have Dan Heron in the mix there, and uh, uh, th that is going to help them when Billingsley comes back later. Uh, it always looks this way in spring training. It always looks like the pitching staff, particularly of the Dodgers, is going to be gaudy. 
Uh, this is it no does. exception. There's some excess pitching. There's some really good pitching. Right. Uh, and, and if everything works out well, nobody takes on a big injury, this is going to be a great pitching staff. Very true. Now, Dee Gordon has gained some weight. He told us he gained 12 pounds. We caught up with Dee in the locker room. Now, you know Dee is a great base stealer, so we also asked Maury Wills about his base stealing. So let's take a look. Talking about spring training, how's it been going for you so far? It's been going pretty good, you know, just getting my feet wet, you know, just getting used to a new position, just th things like that. Uh, you know, just happy to be here and, you know, just playing hard. What kind of things do you learn specifically when you change position? Because Donnie was talking about the fact that he's, you know, trying people in different places. So for you, what are the, the small things? Uh, just positioning, nowhere to be on certain plays, you know, things like that. Uh, nothing crazy. He's, he's a delight to work with. Very nice young man, very respectful. His dad did a good job with him because he's still saying, yes, sir, no, sir. Calls me Uncle Maury. Uh, loads of talent. Everybody in, in the uh, camp would like to have his talent. Uh, it's just a question of putting it together. And he's working hard. He's working with Franklin Stubbs, with his hitting, with me there. I'm um, kind of his, um, there's something about me that, that just makes him breathe. Yeah. Um, and, and, the, and the same he does for me. Well, he tr I think he trusts you as well. He trusts me. And that's very important yeah. when you uh, become a, an instructor or a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say enough things about him. He's still not where he's got the job made. Yeah. He's still got to earn it. He knows that. Make sure he knows that. Uh, never become complacent. Right. No matter how well you do, you can always be better. Right. That's right. So he knows that. And um, I think he's got a good chance to break camp with the club. Wow. Maybe be there opening day in the starting lineup. That's all we can do for him. That's it. After that, D has to do the rest. Can you talk about teaching somebody how to steal a base? I know a lot of it is instinctive. It's also you have to think about what you're doing and then react quickly. How, how, talk about the process of that because it seems confusing sometimes. Is it all instinctive? How does it work? Well, it's kind of emotional too. Okay, right. You got 60,000 people yep. screaming. Oh, we forgot about that in Dodger Stadium, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And you know, we as Dodgers are geared to win. Right. So, and the writers are there with their pens and and the reporters like you are there with your cameras and all. Hey, you know, um, it takes a lot of courage to get out there and and go for it. To be embarrassed, get picked off, get thrown out by 10 feet, or you make it. Um, that's the difference in uh, those who succeed and those who fail. God gives us a talent. He gave him tons of talent. Every player in camp, every regular anyway, and I say regular, I mean outfield and infield catcher, would love to have the talent that God gave D. Gordon. Right. And, and his speed. Speed kills. Never goes into a slump. Maury Wills is so awesome. I love talking to him every year here, and it really would not be spring training for me if Maury wasn't right here. Maury is a real, him. he is the real deal. He was an absolutely phenomenal player, uh, beating out Willie Mays for the MVP back in 1962, <laughs> just for starters. Which yeah, will, just for that. Which Willie Mays still complains about, by the way. That's so great. He, he says, but Willie, get over it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was, a, he was an all-time Dodger classic. Uh, nice as could be, great acquisition uh, for them to have, not acquisition for them to hold on to him for spring training. Well, uh, really fun guy to talk to. I'm, what the players learn from Maury Wills is just invaluable. I mean, he is just such a smart guy, and he knows how to connect with the young players, and he's always a lot of fun. Now, one of the big stories here this year is the fact that the Dodgers, yes, they have four outfielders and three positions, okay? But last year, we had only two games when all four of them were healthy. So we got to talk about that. Matt Kemp, everybody wants to know if Matt Kemp is healthy. You know, is he going to be the, the Matt Kemp of old um, in center field? Matt is He's getting better. His rehab is going very well. Mattingly said he's about a five out of seven. So Matt's going to be ready to go. Maybe not when the season starts, but he will be ready and healthy when he does start. And he looks good. He's getting his work in here in spring training. He looks strong and healthy. And uh, he and Carl Crawford are the two who you worry about their injuries. So yeah. this actually works out, I think, great having four outfielders. You've, right. got, you've got Carl Crawford, uh, left-handed bat. You've got Andre Ethier, left-handed bat. And yes. Crawford is a fragile one. 
You've got uh, uh, Kemp, Matt Kemp, right. as a uh, right-handed hitter. You've got Puig yeah, as a right-handed Puig. hitter. Right. Uh, Puig, I don't know that you could you could drop a steam shovel on him, and I think he would say, that feels good, do it on the other side. Uh, well, so, the way he, he smacks into walls like Matt Kemp does is like, uh, don't. <laughs> Don't get too close to the wall. It's right there. He, you know? he, he should cut down on that. He's going to have to. <laughs> when he, uh, but right now, he has a physique of a, uh, a, a, a bulldozer, so yeah, there's really no does. harm coming in. But what's great about this is that you have two righties, two lefties. You can do all kinds of stuff. If you start a game uh, against a left-handed pitcher who leaves the game early in the third inning, you can swap out. If they change hands, you can change sides. That's you, right. you can bring in an alternate. Uh, so they have balance. You can bring in an alternate outfielder. You have balance. You have two lefties, two righties. Uh, you have a little bit of fragility in uh, two of those guys. So the mixing and matching you can do with this, I think is great. The fact that you can you can uh, interchange the two lefties, the two righties. I don't think they'll platoon. That's the other option. No one ever likes platooning, but you have moving well, pieces that will fit together well. Donnie likes to do the double switch thing a lot too. So he can utilize these guys however he wants to utilize them. And the question with Puig is kind of roping him in just a little bit. Everybody's a little worried about Yesiel, but you know what? He's calmed down a little bit. And I think that that's really important because He's learning baseball every single day. He's learning where the cutoff band is. He's learning where the wall is. And he's just so talented that you don't want to take all that away from him at the same time. So you don't want all that enthusiasm to be gone. And I think that he is really going to be a lot better this year. Yeah, I have a slightly different take on this, I think, for most people. I think he knows all this stuff. He knows where the cutoff guy is. He knows which base he's supposed to. He just has to do it. He just has to do it. Exactly. He, uh, he, he is so physically strong, so physically capable, yes. and able to do things other guys can't do, that he's like, heck, I'm going home. I'm throwing home on this. I'm throwing home off my back but foot. But here's the thing. When he did it and he threw home, it was so phenomenal that we all had our jaws dropped open because we were like, did he just throw that ball all the way from way out where he was all the way home? And yes, he did. And that's something young players do. They, they have a tremendous arm and, and they want to use it. So he's making throws to third base and home plate that he should not be making occasionally. And there's a price for that. Those throws usually are not free. It'll cost you a base. The batter is now right. moving up to second base, whether the guy's out at the plate or third or not. And that starts to wear, particularly on the infielders. The infielders now lose the double play. And this is the kind of evolved baseball that he's going to grow into. The infielder is going to be yelling at him, saying, you know, you almost got him at home, and that was impressive. But now we have a runner at second instead of at first. He's in scoring right. position. It's little Our things double like play that. is gone. It's little things like that he has to learn. Those are big things. Those are big I, I, things. And, and, and he's going to get that. The right. guys are going to drill it into his head, uh, and he's going to realize, okay, I can go home. I can go to third. I seem to be getting yelled at a lot. Perhaps and, I should not. Well, and one of the guys who's really helping him a lot, too, is Andre Ethier, because Andre has been here for nine years. He's been here a really long time, and he's helped Puig a lot. In fact, I even remember last year, he would talk to Puig, and I was like, does he speak Spanish? It, how are they communicating? But they were, and Puig was really listening to him because Andre is a veteran. He knows what he's talking about for sure. I see that in the locker room, Marie. The two of them were sitting side yes. by side, and they're just talking, and right. I also was wondering. I thought, is, is this conversation Spanish or English? I wasn't yeah. close enough to tell. But they he's are clearly communicating, and Puig is paying attention to uh, uh, to what Andre Ethier has to say. Ethier is, it's hard to he's believe he's become a veteran. I know, I know, I, I still think of him as a fuzzy-faced kid. Yeah, you know, and, and one thing, too, when we're in spring training, and even throughout the season, and players don't always just want to talk about baseball. Sometimes they want to talk about other interests that they have. So I had a chance to catch up with two stars of the Dodgers, Matt Kemp and Andre Ethier. So let's take a look. We already know all the baseball stuff about Andre Ethier, so we thought we'd have some fun today. Now, I know you are a real car guy. Yes, I am. Uh, I try to keep that quiet, but uh, yeah, it's gotten out uh, somewhat uh you know, I like to say it's a it's a, a bad, expensive ho yeah. you know hobby uh, <laughs> a habit. I think it's more than anything; it's a habit. Uh, yeah, I have a you know three old school hot rod uh, t you know type cars I have in my garage at home, and uh, it's one where uh, it's become more. It's, it's it's tough just to keep them balanced and rotated and give them equal uh, you know equal time uh, out there on the road. <laughs> now, did you grow up loving cars or? Oh yeah, I always had a, a thing for hot rods and old right. old school cars and. Uh, you know something uh you know that always interested me and uh you know it's been a lot of my off season sitting there underneath uh you know on my back underneath the car polishing uh you know cleaning stuff up and uh you know kind of, you know two three hours at night uh, you can get lost there uh you know sitting there like i said with a, a can of cleaner and uh, just scrubbing off all the little dirt and grime that gets underneath i know last year you went to the i think it was uh was it the nascar indy race out here in phoenix yes, yes. I, went, I went there last spring and actually i went this following november there's two races here in phoenix every year and uh i try to make it a point to you know at least make it to one and um you know it's a it's a great event if you're a car guy or yeah. interested in any type of car uh 
it's big, loud, fast, and uh, you know a lot of fun. And uh, you know it's a good, uh, it's a good atmosphere to go out there and uh, you know see guys behind the wheel. And uh, you know, so just it's seeing a person is a lot different on TV. Everyone's like, yeah, how's it interesting? I said, when you get up close and see how fast those cars are really going, it's something, uh, you know, something special to see. Who did you have a chance to meet and talk to? Uh, I always sit with the uh, 99 car. That's why you pronounce the you know drivers is by their car number. That's right. uh, 99 yeah. car. Uh, the 99 car. Yes. Yeah. 99 <laughs> car. Uh, Carl Edwards, uh, uh, Roush Fenway uh, team. I've gotten to know them uh, you know quite a bit over the years, and so they are always uh, you know nice uh, you know enough to invite me back every year. They're here in Phoenix, and I've even got a couple chances to sit up on the box, uh, oh, wow. you know the pit box during the during the race, and uh, you know be from here to you know 10 feet away from when the you know car comes in the pit and uh, get a chance to see it. Now, do you think someday like wait? down the line when your baseball career is said and done you might want to get into racing a little bit I would love to. They, they, they make sure in bold print in our contracts <laughs> to, to put no auto racing yes. or anything like that in our uh, in our contracts and uh, it has crossed my mind uh, a few times to go out there and get behind the wheel but uh, you know, I'll leave that uh, you know, for the later half of my life. We'll leave that to the 99 car, the 88 or whoever you follow. Yeah, I need to get a 16 car out there. <laughs> yes, we need a 16 car out there, absolutely. Who is the face of the Dodgers? And we got a lot of Matt Kemp's, and we got a lot of Tommy Lasorda's, which was really cool. Oh, oh, for sure, Tommy, man. Tommy's a legend. He definitely bleeds blue. And uh, if, if if you don't like the Dodgers, he doesn't like you. So, uh, you know, Tommy has 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 done a lot for this organization, and um, you know, he's he's the he's the last manager to win a World Series. So, uh, I, I, we need to change that. You know, this I think this is the year we have a really good chance to do a lot of great things, and uh, you know, bring some noise to L.A. and, and bring that championship back. What was it like to sit with him at the basketball game the other night here? <laughs> Very entertaining. I bet. Very entertaining. Very entertaining. <laughs> he's, I think he's a fan of all sports. Of course, he loves baseball. But when you see him in another environment, what's up? He just like? likes competition. I think he likes to see com people, people compete and, uh, you know, out there playing a sport. And, uh, you know, Tommy loves to talk and he loves to give advice. So uh, if he can give advice to anybody, he'll do it. And since we always like to have fun here in spring training, I had some fun with some of the players and asked them, Besides your phone, what's the one thing that you can't live without? Here's what they had to say. Besides your phone, what's the one thing that you cannot live without? Probably my wife. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that was a good answer. Yeah, my wife, that's, I, I wouldn't survive. <laughs> uh, one thing I need all the time, food. <laughs> Any particular kind or? I have a specific uh, regiment that I'm on, and when I'm on that for so long and I fall victim to any outside food, I get a little bit sluggish, a little moody, so I need, I, I need my food constantly, or I'm just going to be very bitter. Mi mi móvil. Mi cadena. Yeah, his necklace. Okay. Besides your phone, what's the one thing that you always have to have? My wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Doug, what is the one thing besides your phone that you can't live without? Well, if you'd asked me when I was younger, uh, I think based on uh, my wife's attitude, she would have said my wedding ring. I, I don't think she cares anymore now, so really, Maria. <laughs> She's nothing. like, lose the wedding ring. It's, it's okay, really. <laughs> Mine her, is gone. Fantasy. <laughs> Get rid of the ring. Get rid of it. It's all right. I don't care anymore. I'm over you now. <laughs> We're at that point. Exactly. Uh, no, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't have anything in particular. That's the, it? The, the phone I got to have, the wallet, the keys are always lost anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, all right, Maria, but enough about me. Uh, what is the one <laughs> yeah, thing? Yeah, enough about you. <laughs> plenty enough about me. What's the one thing you cannot leave the house without beside your phone? All right, well, it's my lip gloss, but it's Diet Coke. Not Diet Pepsi, but Diet Coke, and yes. I must have it with me, especially in the morning. So the they're equal. They're equal right there. The caffeine jolt while you're looking good. That's the important <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's a good answer, Doug. <laughs> All right. Now, we also want to remind you that you can watch Playing the Field 24-7. What is that now? Playingthefieldtv.com. All one word. Once again, that's playingthefieldtv.com. That's right. Now, tomorrow we are staying out in the desert. We're going to be with the Los Angeles Angels. So you're going to want to tune in for that, but we got to go. They're kicking us out of Camelback Ranch, Doug. Off we go. Off we go. No kicking and screaming this year. <laughs> that was so unseemly last year. Wasn't it? Yeah. I know, that was security. bad. Security. In fact, if that security guy sees you, then just start running now. I'll be packing up. Here we go. All right, I'm Maria Sorrell. He's Doug Hughes, and we'll see you tomorrow from Tempe, Arizona.